Hello everybody and welcome to Soviet Space Program. This will be a career playthrough video series in Kerbal Space Program RP-1 using only Soviet hardware. This will be a standard 1951 start on moderate difficulty with the goal of sending crew to the moon and eventually Mars. To start this career, we begin in the admin building to select our starting programs. Although X-Planes pays out four times as much as the other two available, I will just focus on rockets. After accepting early rocket development on FAST and suborbital research on Breakneck, I head into R&D to spend my first two science points on post-war material science and then hire 50 researchers. Next up is the VAB to build our first launch complex for our sounding rocket program. This rocket is a reworked version of the MR-1 included with the express install of RP-1. For the solid stage, I rotated the fins 5 degrees to give it a small amount of spin stabilization at launch. With high pressure steel tanks, the U-1250 base configuration will get this above the Kármán line and return the avionics for extra science points. Building the new LC, I double-checked the dimensions of the rocket and lowered the LC limit to the bare minimum to reduce the cost and build time from 40 days to 37 days. And after time warping 37 days, we go into the management window to hire a few engineers while leaving some funds to still build the rocket. From there, we use our unlock credit to purchase the tooling for all the parts to drop the price of the rocket down to 101 funds. To minimize micromanaging the hiring of more engineers, I use the auto hire button for 10 engineers. Lastly, we hit the launch button to unlock remaining parts and integrate the rocket. The 22nd of April, 1951, the first launch of the year with a successful light of all engines. While this launch is underway, I'll give some background on this playthrough. I am playing on version 3.14 of RP-1 on moderate difficulty. With Q penalties enabled, my strategy for the sounding rockets is to stick with a 1-ton LC. Adding an extra stage will be a bit risky due to those increased chances of ignition failures. In addition to only sticking with Soviet hardware, I will not be using isogrid tanks until 1970. The U-1250 burns until completion without any performance loss, setting us to an altitude of 127 kilometers. With the success of the first launch, we are now able to hire our first leader in the administration building. Valentin Glushko reduces research salary costs and increases reputation from contracts, so I go with him. Then a quick hop into R&D to research post-war rocketry testing and early tracking systems. The 9th of June is the second launch of the year, being an altitude contract of 80 kilometers carrying 75 units of sounding payload. Something to notice with this one is the shortened tip of the rocket. With my lack of foresight on stretching the body from the sounding payload, the rocket ended up being 0.4 meters over the LC limit of 9 meters. It wasn't too big of a deal as tooling cost was minimal. Returning the payload is not a contract requirement, but I just happened to build the rocket this way.
Back at the Space Center, the newly gained science points are then put into early science for the advanced bio capsule and mass spectrometer experiment. Afterwards, a bit of time warping to the completion of post-war material science. This unlocks aluminum tanks, engineering efficiency upgrade, as well as contractors. Ilyushin Design Bureau is hired to further reduce research salary cost. And Rocketdyne is hired to speed up early and orbital rocket research speeds. With enough funding coming in each day, we can now build the downrange rocket launch complex. This LC will be for the R1 rocket family, based off the German V2 and powered by the RD100. As post-war material science has been unlocked, steel tanks will be skipped and this will start with aluminum. Building this LC will take 95 days at a rate of 96 funds per day. I will later have to throttle the construction rate due to funding constraints and delay the build by 17 more days. The 11th of September is the launch of the suborbital return, which is now achievable thanks to upgrading to aluminum tanks. Luck has been on our side and no engine issues have caused any contracts to fail so far. The 18th of October is a repeat launch of the 80 km altitude contract. This is the final launch of the year and thankfully another success. Launch Complex 2 now in operation, we can switch focus to building the first R1 rocket. Funding is still tight, so the original 10 engineers from LC1 are shifted over, and time has passed to gain an extra 900 funds to build the rocket. From here, Auto Hire is set to get up to 60 engineers as funds allow. With the final weeks of 1951, all that's left is some time warping and watching the engineer count tick up. Thanks for watching and see you on the next episode.